Another factor that definitely leads to uh, variations within the population is selection. In selection, it has to do with selecting towards a look or away from a look so that uh, it's going to be more common in the population. And remember, the whole concept of selection, to summarize the theory of evolution in a nutshell, is that animals will reproduce at very, very fast. They're going to grow exponentially, if allowed to, by unlimited resources. But the reality of the situation is that the environments typically have limited resources, which will limit the amount of people that can live. So there's always more people born that can possibly survive, which means people will struggle to survive. And in a struggle for survival, since people are different from each other, since there's variety and diversity in the population, there's always going to be a higher likelihood for certain groups to survive than others because they have a better set of adaptations, a better overall fitness is what we call it. And this fitness will, cause, will also have an effect especially if it allows the animal or the organism to live longer, have more offspring, which survives to do the same. And then over many, many generations, you're going to end up creating more members of that, of that particular group are going to be present in populations, and a shift on the alley frequency will actually take place. Unless, of course, a random effect like genetic drift happens, which gets a certain group to become the founder or the bottleneck, and then there will be a sudden change which causes things like punctuated equilibrium. Similarly, if a large migration happens and it brings a whole influx of not new genes to the population, that might change the population very, very fast. All right, but selection is very important, and natural selection is basically the process that I just described, and we did several examples of this already in the evolutionary lecture series, so I'm not going to go do, do it, but remember the moss example, that you shift from a population of white mosses most often because they would be camouflaged in the white trees, to a population of black mosses once the trees become polluted, and now the white is no longer advantageous, the black becomes advantageous. So that's in itself microevolution because of selection. And that one actually happened in only a few generations in, in, in Europe during the, 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 the Industrial Revolution. Now we're going to talk more about selection and how it works on an, another section of this lecture series. And we'll also talk about some kinds of math that can be done with population genetics to calculate the effect of selection over a few generations. Another mechanism that will also cause microevolution is called non-random mating. Now, non-random mating basically occurs when uh, organisms are forced or to mate or tend to mate more often with someone than either someone else. Now, selection is the thing that jumps to mind. You know, of course, that you typically select people with a specific trait or they're going to be more common because they're going to be more likely to survive and then they'll be more available in the population. And therefore, there's a greater likelihood of that particular look to, to be to engage in sexual reproduction. But there's more than this, just that. Sometimes simple proximity is the factor. You're black, so you camouflage yourself in black environments. So if you're a black mouse, you're going to probably cross with other black mouse because those are the ones which will probably be living in that environment that matches your adaptation. And then over time, that could lead to enough isolation that could cause separation between these two groups within the same species and lead to the speciation or differentiation between the species. Likewise, uh, in humans, geographical proximity will cause us to actually mate with people who are in our neighborhoods or that we go to college with, that we go to school with. You don't date any random person of the human race. The chances of you dating someone from Thailand if you live in the U.S. are very, very small, even with the globalization of the Internet, you know? The, or with air, air travel and fast, globalized society that we live in, you're still going to meet more often with people that you actually see more often, and you're going to have a higher likelihood of actually mating with members of the population that surrounds you. So sometimes proximity is going to be a major factor. Sometimes the environment is a major factor. You know, you're going to have... Uh, water in certain places so animals will flock towards the water and then the animals that are in that water or living by that water is going to be the ones that you're probably going to be mate with, mating with. The animals that you travel with are probably going to be the ones in case of the exa example here is the elephants which are you know traveling together as like a pack all of those will obviously be the ones that will mate against with each other within their families unless of course they randomly meet on another family but even that's not as random as you would think because the migration patterns have a reason for, for occurring so between selection proximity environmental causes and other things reasons mating is not random which means that certain alleles will tend to mate uh, to concentrate and to become fixated with certain populations, which will lead to isolation among population groups and the increase of interpopulation gene differences, which ultimately can cause speciation and changes in population, which we call macroevolution, but even towards macroevolution. And we'll talk more about that on the next uh, chapter.